typical way we do it is we are the sage on the stage, where I'm the lecturer, I know everything about the subject, and I am imparting my knowledge on the uninitiated masses. And instead what we want to do is say, we all have interesting opinions, uh, we all have something to add to the debate, uh, and how do you do that with uh, a large group, you know, over a hundred people in the same room? Well, you have to figure out different technologies and different techniques, and the clickers is one way that helps you get people engaged into the specific uh, ideas that you're talking about. It's fun, uh, as students like it, and it's, it's a learning tool as well, so they're actually practicing during the lecture what they've learned, and I've had some very good feedback from students. Uh, but uh, uh, they see it as a learning tool and it's enhanced their learning. And then we, we all watch those game shows <laughs> and although we might not win a million, you know, it, it makes you feel like part of the session rather than just a member of the audience, so it makes them more of an active participant. Um, I also think it allows you to try and understand where they're up to so we can make sure the session is meeting their needs. Um, and, you know, some of the questions that we ask in careers are difficult questions, you know, what do you want to do with your life? Do you know what you're going to do after you graduate? You know, those are horrendous questions at the best of time and to actually all answer them in front of all your friends, you know, you don't want to be the one who's got no idea. So, it, it sort of, I think that they like the fact that they, they can do it anonymously and they can engage in the session. Here's an example of how I'd, I'd use it for stats. Um, we, uh, it, when you have, it has a Likert response, so you can rate one to five. And I want to demonstrate that most people score on average and the a couple of people score really low or really high. Um, that's called a normal distribution and that's, that's a concept people sometimes get stuck with. What I really love about the clickers is you automatically create that in the class. So you be giving anyone an attitudinal questionnaire, real time students will create their own normal distribution and that embeds the context of what we're talking about. So if it was something on food and cities, I would ask students about their diet. If it was about the governance of cities, I might ask students about their political persuasion uh, and try to try to personalize it and get them to reflect on, on, on the content of the course and the content of the lecture and what it means to them personally. You don't want people to get the questions right, necessarily. Uh, I look at questions that I did in the previous sessions and the year before, depending on the spread or the distribution of responses from the students, I might highlight certain questions as good ones that splits the students. It gives you the opportunity to, to, to make further discussion. Whereas if they've, if, if they've got 94% of students who get a question correct, uh, you might find there's very little to discuss because they nailed the subject. You get the content and then you try and slot in every 20 minutes or every big topic or every point you want to highlight a reinforcement or a recap. So I know what the content is you have to deliver, and that's fine. And then I want to find opportunities to contextualise it or to reinforce it or to make it enjoyable. I mean, from our perspective, we've got a pretty good idea about where our students are in terms of, you know, common themes in terms of whether it's in career planning and work experience and so on. But it's really helpful when you've got potentially 200 survey participants in a room to get that real data. And um, we've really started to use that. We, we ran a session with psychology recently and it was good to kind of get that data to take back to the school and use it to really develop future sessions which met that need. I, I had expectations for, for different questions that I had about what the answers would be. And I was, usually I was wrong. And so for me it's, it's, it's invigorating rather than being confusing that, you know, there's all these different opinions. Uh, for me it's, 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 it's encouraging, I think so. A tip would be to put a couple of slides in at the beginning of a lecture and that's enough to start with. And gradually you see the benefits, you can add more and more. I think, it's, I think treating it as a game is good. Um, seeing where it fits into the practice to reinforce techniques I think is good. Uh, and I think just give it a go to see if it works for you. Because there's plenty of lectures that it, wouldn't, it doesn't fit. But if you can use it, it's great fun. You know, the first time you use it, I'm not going to deny, I was really concerned, is it going to go okay? Is it going to work? Are we going to have to go to plan B halfway through? And it went really well. And we had good response from students. And it just met, gave you another tool to actually help to engage and get people listening and get people involved in a session. So I think my one piece of advice would be, have a go.